from family events to volunteer opportunities to community happenings, there is a lot going on in your community. Learn about all the possibilities and opportunities on this episode of Community Hotline. Hi, welcome to Community Hotline. My name is Monica Weitzel. We're here in Gresham, and we are at Metro East Community Media to show you what's going on in the community. Tonight, we have a couple of organizations that are going to um, inform you, hopefully inspire you to become more involved. First off, I have Vassar Bird, who is the CEO at Rose Villa. Vassar, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks for being here. So Vassar, um, you've been at Rose Villa, what, six? Six and, and a half years. Six and a half years. Mm -hmm. Tell us, uh, tell the viewers who may not know a little bit about um, what you do there and what the organization is all about. You bet. So Rose Villa is licensed as a continuing care retirement community. That's a big mouthful. But all that means is that people can move into an independent home and then if anything happens health-wise, it's already sort of taken care of. We have assisted living services on site, a 24-hour nursing community. So there's no crisis decision making and that's why people tend to choose a place like a CCRC. And at Rose Villa, we've been there for over 50 years serving our community. That's a long time. So it's, uh, we have a lot of experience in how to provide the support that seniors need. What do you think makes Rose Villa unique uh, compared to other senior living? There are a lot of things. Uh, whenever you talk to someone in senior living, they'll say it's all about the community. And that's true. The people are really important. But Rose Villa is the only place where you have a front door and a back door. Mm -hmm. So our community lays out like a lovely pocket neighborhood with attached garden cottages, uh, folks can have their pets. Uh, everyone's a big gardener, they like mm -hmm. to be outdoors. It's not a big tower or a, a building. Right, right, and that is different. And, and I'll just share my personal stuff with, yes. the, uh, with the audience that my mother lived at Roseville, as mm -hmm. did my father, mm -hmm. um, and they moved in about 12 years ago. And, and I just lost my mother uh, last month, but she loved it there at Roseville, and so did my dad. And, and you're right, having the front door and a back door and having a little garden space, and it was just like a, a little community. Exactly. Yeah. I, think, uh, I think that we do um, a really good job of really focusing on the person and being as creative as we can to keep them as independent as possible. So we have folks living in their cottages till they're 99, 100 years old. Yeah, yeah. And we can do that by delivering services and making sure that we really are specific in taking care of what they really need. Right, and you're very good about um, keeping tabs on everybody. Mm -hmm. For example, when, when we had snow a couple years ago, mm -hmm. I know there were people coming to check individually, you know, calling, That's if great. people don't answer, you go down there and check on them, you know, make sure they have food and everything they need, and right. you know, just, it's very personalized care. It was wonderful, and actually that particular time was great. I had my whole family came as well because they wanted to shovel and check out everyone. So they were uh, being offered hot chocolate by the residents that That's we were right. helping. <laughs> I it's love a it. system. Well, yeah. It's a system. Yeah. Well, yeah. I ended up getting stuck there because I, I didn't have a car at the time. I took a oh, bus great. out to see mom and then I no couldn't more get buses. out. Right, yeah, right. I, was, I was there. So I was there for a while and, and did spend a lot of time there. So I did see yeah. you know, all the good work. The staff is very, very caring. I, I, I agree. And I think senior living is changing a lot. In the olden days, uh, you know, it was much more a standardized kind of institutional model mm -hmm, of care. Mm -hmm. And even now, when people think about retirement communities, they think nursing home in their head. Right, and that's not so not true. That's, yeah, that's it's not more like case. club, you know, yeah. or cool neighborhood. Um, so what we like to what we like to focus on is the individual. And so our goal is to be collaborative with uh, with the residents. I think our community is extraordinary in the way that we can partner mm -hmm. staff and residents to do programs. If someone has a, a new idea, we're locally owned, independently operated, we can implement an idea the next day. So you have a resident council that we brings certainly. those ideas and, and talks about them and mulls yes. them over. Yes. And then uh, the residents are very involved in making the programs work. They are. Right? Yeah. Couldn't do it without them. Yeah. And everyone who works there, I had a previous career as an economist and changed my career to be in senior living because I want to work with residents. I want to be with seniors. They are 
so inspiring. The, the sorts of stories and oh the, yeah. the strength that they display. It's something that if anyone has a chance to experience it, they almost always are a convert and they want to start working right. in the industry. I, I can understand that. And you know, the, the population is aging. I mean, yes. we're all you know, moving up toward that age where we might have to go into or get to go into senior yes. living because yes. really, yeah. there's some really cool things there. Tell me about some of the programs that you have. I know there are so many, you can't name them all, but right. tell me some of the things that you right. have going on at Roseville. Well, we do a lot of community partnerships. So we have programs with our local uh, grade school. We do Start Making a Reader Today. We do a really cool after school program where they come to our acre community garden and see how where food comes from. <laughs> we thought Which that was a good a idea. And there's a lot of kids that don't know. That's really oh, a true. french fries, a potato? Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's really true. We have a theater group, a super, super hilarious selection of one-act plays that they've put on over the last several years. And then on the 29th of this month, we are having a, a reading and acting out of memoirs for the folks who live in our health center. So right. all right. kinds I, of I plan ways to come to, to that. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. And, and the health center, for those who don't know, is what probably uh, years back would have been called the nursing home. Yes. But really, it's, yeah. it's, it was a, it's a good place. My mother ended up there the last year. But yeah. I couldn't ask for more caring people. And, and they I did agree. really. Um, try to gear everything toward her needs. For example, she liked to garden and liked to put her around with the plants. So they you know, put her in charge of you know, these plants over here right. and this and that. Right. So that was great. And we, we run it in a way so that you know, people get up when they feel like it. They order breakfast, whatever they like to eat, whenever they get up. There's no like, it's 7 o'clock, time for your shot. <laughs> right. you know, right. I don't know. It's just a right. crazy way that it used to be. But we're very individually oriented. And our health center is a place that no one really wants to go. Mm -hmm. They don't want to ever have that kind of need. But it's the it's the insurance for the people who live at Rose Villa that if something happens, it's right there. Right. They don't have to go anywhere. Right. And the and food that, is really good. By I agree. The way, I, I must agree. say, they Chef tend to get, wonderful. They tend to get back into their uh, independent homes faster because mm -hmm. their care is right there. We can have rehab services come and help them with physical therapy right in their homes, so they get home faster because right. they're not going off site. That's so. good. And and being right there with people that they they yes. know, it's their neighbors. Their neighbors can come up and see them yes. easily. Tell me a little bit about the foundation part of it. Yes, we're a not-for-profit, and we have a separately incorporated uh, 501c3 foundation. At Rose Villa, when you enter Rose Villa, it's a big promise. It's a big package. We're in partnership with you, hopefully, for the rest of your life. And so for any resident that outlives their financial resources, they apply for foundation assistance, and the foundation pays all of their bills. Which is amazing. What a great sense of security to know that... Yes doesn't matter if you live to be 100 or you know even 85 and you've run out of money right it's okay and nobody knows no absolutely not it's absolutely totally not. confidential and and the thing is people do live a lot longer how do you save to live to be 102 oh, yeah i know we have a resident in the health center right uh, mm -hmm. uh, we do Mildred, i think what yes. she, i think she's turned 103 she, or 102 she did and she's she great did. she plays the piano during meal time and yeah, yeah she's wonderful yeah. We, were, so. we thought it was funny because there's another resident who's 100 that resident never gets to be the old guy <laughs> because there's a 104 year old <laughs> Is she I think that's, oh, nice. She's that's amazing. Yeah. That's great. Now you are make. Uh, well, let me before we go any further. You brought a few pictures. Yes, thank and you so, for inviting me. Yeah, uh, so maybe we could take a look at them. You sure. can tell us what we're looking at and uh, get kind of a feel for uh, how Rose Villa operates there. Terrific. Okay. Now, mm. So that is the Rose Villa Viking Dragon Boat Team. This year, for the Rose Festival races that happen the first weekend in June, we'll be fielding a team for the seventh year in a row. Wow. And we have done really well. That team is composed of staff members and residents. That would be me being really I happy. Say, you're, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, you are on that team. Yeah, super fun. It's a really great time. We're outside all the time, practicing together. It's just a, it's just a blast. I did. I was one of the Vicettes right there one year. And of course, no team is complete without <laughs> yes, our their cheerleaders. cheerleaders. So you can see there are resident cheerleaders as well. It's amazing how many people want to be a cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> the ones they never got to when they were in high school now that's want to right. be it. That's right. So that's our team. And then, as I mentioned, we have lots and lots of gardens. Uh, many people here are super big gardeners. They like to be outside. So we have so much produce that we have a farmer's market during the season, and all the produce proceeds go to the foundation. Right. So residents bring up what they can't eat, and the uh, staff usually buy them. It's another, uh, And she's a huge Dahlia. Penny uh, has wonderful, yeah. beautiful flowers. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. yeah so flowers are available, too. And then we have, we, have, we like, we specialize in taking care of people who would never fit into a, a, a normal place. <laughs> so we allowed this, uh, this resident to retrofit a building we weren't using for a metal smith shop. So he makes, he does metal working there and does all kinds of creative arts. 
bronze sculptures. Uh, he's, he's a fun he guy. He is an awesome guy. <laughs> yeah, he is amazing. And these guys are, are, are checking out their tomato crop. We have a luau every year and we uh, make we, we uh, grow the corn that we use to steam the pig and the pit is dug in right, the community garden. Right. I rarely really miss that. That's, oh, me too. That's always fun. Yeah. Fantastic food. Yeah, yeah the food's great. So. How fun. You yeah, have a lot a, of great stuff going on. And, and your community there is, is pretty diverse. As it far is. as uh, I know there, you recently were in the news for um, yeah. having uh, openly gay couples that yes. were living there and that's yes. accepted and everybody everybody is totally fine with that. Yeah. I, you know, yeah. and, that's and I think it's thing. because we attract people who are very independent mm -hmm. and they don't really want anyone in their business and they wouldn't dream of getting in your business. And they're active so people. They people are that have active. varied interests and, and yeah. travel and do all sorts of great stuff. I think stuff. people value the fact that you have a relationship and there's someone that you love. And that's more important than anything else. Oh, I, I would definitely agree with that. Now, you mentioned that um, senior living is changing. Yes. And Roseville and so is, Rose Villa. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Roseville is changing with it. So yes. tell me what you're doing yes. to keep up with the, the changes. Yes, we are very excited to say that we are uh, redeveloping a significant portion of our campus. Uh, we have uh, 75 new homes that we're going to be adding. And at the entrance to Rose Villa, we have a main street area where we'll be building all kinds of amenities. Um, a pool, a wellness center, a library, a new dining venue, um, all kinds of things right at Main Street where it feels like when you enter Rose Villa, you're in a village square, a little bit like Lake Oswego, yeah. mm -hmm. where things are very pedestrian friendly, very right. human scale. There'll be a few floors of apartments right there on Main Street, but then most of our apartments as they are now will be garden oriented apartments, single floors, uh, cascading down the hill toward the bluff that overlooks the river. So we have oh, so man. many opportunities for river views and mm -hmm. places for great parties. A terrific uh, food and beverage department that I can't wait to start serving at all these <laughs> venues. Oh, so, I bet, I bet. Yeah, yeah the, the way it's set up right now, mostly triplexes, are they? Yeah, right in between, there we have du duplex, fourplex, uh, mm -hmm. and as, it, as, as we redevelop, it will be, we have some duplexes and then no more than three uh, attached cottages. That's so great. it'll be it'll be fantastic. So do you have a, a timeline on when yes. you think this is all yes. going to happen? We are pre-selling those those homes right now, and things are going very well. So we expect to break ground the first quarter of next year. Oh, that's soon. That's yeah. great. Um, so people, if people are interested in finding out about yes. being part of that, yes. they can contact your marketing department, yes. I assume, and take a tour of what you have now, and then see the Absolutely. blueprints and the, uh, the plans for. What's and going you on. can certainly check out everything on our website, which is just rosevilla.org. Very easy to find. Um, do I see my telephone number while we're on here? You can see the <laughs> telephone number, and we'll put it up on the screen, too. So oh, that's great. Yeah, or you can call. Computer. Phone yeah. is fine. 503-652-3220. Great. Now, you, um, we were talking about how you were um, in the news for being you know, an open, diverse community. Mm -hmm. You also, I believe, were in the news for one of the best nonprofits to work for. Yes. Was that correct? Yes, you made the Oregon list of best nonprofits yeah, in the state of Oregon. That's a great honor. Uh, yes, and I am really proud of it. It's all about the staff. We have people that, uh, it's as important to the staff to be involved in that community as it is to the residents. That's great, yeah. Th so. There are some wonderful people there that, you know. Okay. Even though I won't be going there every week like I was doing before, yeah. I, I was telling you earlier, I will go back because there's some, not just the residents, but the staff right. too, that I, that I would call my friends now. Right. So, um, There was also something in the news recently about Medicaid. Yes. What was that about? Yes, we have just received our Medicaid certification for our nursing center. And I don't know what that means, so, so explain that to me. So the really great <laughs> thing is that we'll be able to serve our greater community even more than we do now by welcoming folks who need 24-hour nursing care but who do not have the resources to pay for it. Oh, okay. So they, if they're Medicaid eligible, they can come into our health center. Good. So it's, it's That's a, a big deal, wonderful isn't it? service. Yes, it is a big deal. No, there's not enough money to pay for the care that people need. Oh, it's so and expensive. So that's it. And so now we can serve a, an additional group of folks that we wouldn't be able to before. So it was a big process. I have to tell you, trying to get into a government program like oh, that I was... Oh, I can imagine. A lot of red tape. Horrible. A lot of red tape. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. it's over. But we're you're here good. now. You're yeah. good. You're yeah. good. I'm very happy about that. So um, I know you have events here. You have fundraisers and things like yes. occasionally. What, when is your um, next event that you have coming up? We have it. We have. We only do one really big fundraiser for the foundation a year, and that's our auction, and okay. that's coming up on Saturday, April thirteenth, five o'clock. Not very far. No, okay. and it's. We have some amazing things this year. We've got a, a professional live auctioneer to help us, um, and so all kinds of things, trips and vacation rentals, and then things that are not so expensive, so it's a price point for right. everyone. Um, and I love that our, our own dining services will prepare the food. We usually ask our department managers to serve the food. Oh, so right. it, everyone gets involved. Everyone comes and volunteers. People, the, I notice the staff bring their family there a lot. It, it just has that family feel. And your kids are always, yes, that's always true. on site. That's true. Really? And I always, we always donate something too. So um, I'm Southern Heritage. So 
for the last several years, I've done an authentic Southern dinner. Mm. Barbecue, cheese grits, hush puppies, whatever you mm, need. That sounds okra. pretty good. I haven't eaten yet. Mm. That sounds really, really mm. good. All the way. So. Now, for people that want to get out there, you're on the bus line. Yes, we are. But the light rail is going to be coming out there fairly soon, isn't I'm it? I'm so excited. Yeah. Yes. The, actually, our new residents moving into the new redevelopment, 2015, same year that the Park oh. Street station should open, the final terminal for the Milwaukee light rail. So how close is that? It that's is about three blocks, and we'll be running so the So we'll be up there. Okay. Yeah. Easy to get to. That's great. Easy. Oh, that's wonderful. Our employees will be, it'll be easier for everyone. We can yeah. decrease our, our carbon footprint significantly. Yeah. yeah. So. I would have. I used to take the bus out there a lot. And, oh, that's uh, a long ride. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it's not, not so much that, but then if it was on the weekend and it, the bus didn't come, so you had to walk from McLaughlin. Yeah. It was a pretty, pretty good little walk, so that's going to be a big help. Yes. What else should we know about Rose Villa? For somebody that's considering moving there or moving, you know, helping a, a loved one decide, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whether or not they want you know, to live in there. I really think that um, our core mission is that we want to have a community that's just the best neighborhood you could ever imagine living in. It doesn't really have anything to do with being a senior neighborhood. We're designing it to serve seniors really well. Mm -hmm. But I want to have a place that your kids and your grandkids are jealous of, but they're not old enough to move into. That's great. And you know what? It, it is very kid friendly yes, and, and pet friendly. Yes. You have a lot of dogs we do. and cats. Yep around so you don't have anything else do you anything besides uh we have someone who wants to bring a duck a duck <laughs> yes <laughs> and i said duck? sure <laughs> okay yeah well, why not yeah. i could just see him walking in on a leash exactly that would be we'll hilarious. see how that goes <laughs> <laughs> um you know I, I was thinking earlier today about all, all the different things you have going on i know you've got that you've got the library which i utilized heavily mm -hmm. and uh mm -hmm. and the, but you have um Trips a lot of times. Oh, yeah. you, you take the residents on on all sorts of trips. Right. I know sometimes it's uh, going to the Oregon coast or going to the casino right. or going hot air ballooning. Yeah. Um, what, what are I've some of the What one. are some of yeah. the more unique things yeah. that you've? Had I love the hot air do? balloon. Uh, we also uh, have a resident that's been volunteering with the Oregon Historical Society, and so he makes um, all kinds of cool like Indian dugout canoe types of things and Walt. Yes. yes, and so we've yes. gone and shown he's shown us how to do that. He's done that with the kids too that we have for yeah. the after school program. So I like that a lot. Yeah, that's we do. Great. We do a lot of those kinds of things. And you have a wood shop there. We do a giant wood shop. Yeah, bigger than anything you'd ever have in your house. And they <laughs> <laughs> We've built a driftwood boat in that wood shop where the, one of our residents is a huge fisherman. So he built it in that shop and he's caught fish from it. Uh, and then we are in the Starlight Parade with a, a Rosella Viking boat. dragon boat float. And so we have built that float. The residents designed it and the residents and staff built it together. I was out there painting the hull with my kids. <laughs> it is so much fun. We, we want to have fun and we want to do that with people that we love and, and we are all in it together. It's, yeah. really, uh, it's a really good system. What do you think is the scariest thing for somebody going from their own personal oh, home yeah. into into a into a live you know community living situation right. what's the hardest thing for people to well it's very much unknown to? and i think the hardest thing is that you are really you need to give yourself time to say goodbye to a phase of life that you really mm -hmm. are leaving mm -hmm. and a lot of people move here from the house they raise their kids in right they lived in the house for 50 years yeah and so we recognize that as the hardest move you may ever make so we have a lot of support around that we have people that help you space plan and all those things but the core issue is that you're moving on to a new phase. And, and you should look forward to exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And people really do, once they move in, some people before then, but once they move in, they, they say always, I wish we moved in sooner. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that we've seen is they, they say, I'm more like I used to be. Oh, what a great thing. Yeah. That's I've, a wonderful thing to hear. I'm more like I used to be. That's wonderful. So. Well, on that note, <laughs> unless there's anything else, I think I uh, we'll wrap up. That was great, uh, Vassar. And I hope that if anybody has any interest in you know, checking out the, the new plans that you have or coming to the auction on April 14th? April 13th. 13th. Yes. 13th. Yes. Go to the website, yep. rosevilla.org, and check it out. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yes, appreciate you're it. welcome. And thanks for watching this episode of Community Hotline. Don't go away. We'll be right back with Bridgetown, and uh, we'll be here waiting for you.